Praise the Lord and good afternoon to you, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I pray that you are all doing well by, by God's amazing love and grace. And, um, and well, I just wanted to come on here and, um, and encourage you with a few words the Lord has given me. A few more words of encouragement. The Lord is moving so wonderfully and powerfully in these last days that we are living in. Hallelujah. Um, and, you know, um, God is not the author of confusion. You know, um, as we read in his word, he told us the signs to look for. Um, you know, he said, when you begin to see all these things, look up your redemption draws near. He spoke to the disciples of what to look for that would indicate the time of the end. And so now, even as his church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, he's speaking to so many of us in different ways um, that his, his coming is drawing nearer and nearer every day. Hallelujah. People are receiving dreams, visions, messages. Hallelujah. And, um, and as we read the word of God, like hallelujah, Jesus said in his word that in the last days he would pour out his spirit on all flesh. Many would have dreams, visions, messages. So many of us in the body of Christ, we've all been given many different gifts. Hallelujah. We're all part of one body and we've all been allocated different gifts from the Holy Spirit. And, um, and so it's important, you know, when the Lord, like God wants to use everyone in the body of Christ. We have to come on here and share, you know, God's called me to be a, um, a watchwoman. Hallelujah. He's called me to be a watchwoman. And not only did he bless me with, um, with a, a ministry, um, a street ministry, but he was the one that specifically told me to come on here um, and start sharing the things which he gives me. God gives you things in order so that you can share with the body of Christ. He doesn't give you dreams, visions and messages so you can keep it to yourself. The more that God knows you will share with the body of Christ, I assure you, the more he will give you, he will give you dreams, visions, messages. And, um, and it's not to these messages, dreams, visions that we share with each other is to edify and encourage the, the body of Christ all the more as we see the day approaching. And um, so now, brothers and sisters, I don't want to ramble on too much. I've just got the words I want to speak to you and just uh, give you a bit of encouragement and, and read a bit of scripture. Um, before we go any further, let me just quickly pray. And um, as um, this, this channel is God's holy channel, this channel belongs to Jesus. On this channel, um, the name of Jesus is lifted up and glorified and magnified and exalted. Hallelujah. On this channel, I will encourage you to be a voice and a light in the darkness. I will encourage you with the word of God. I'll pray for you as the Lord leads me. And, um, and I don't take this lightly this job that the Lord has given me to do I don't take it lightly it's an honor and a privilege for me to come on here and encourage you and share with you and pray for you and um and you know what it's encouraging to me when I'm on the receiving end of testimonies of people who have received prayer you know over the like over the phone as I'm doing my video and you've received prayer or or I've prayed for you who've sent me emails with whatever, whatever it is you're going through and um and it's just a beautiful thing to, to receive testimonies of how the Lord has touched you, how the Lord has delivered you, saved you. And, um, and I'm just, I just feel so blessed and encouraged to be able to, to hallelujah, to, to be an encouragement to you and to be able to pray for you. And so I just encourage you, whatever you need prayer for, I encourage you, you, you email me, uh, you send me a message and I will definitely lift you up in prayer. Um, glory to God. Well, without further ado, let me just pray before I, I get... Uh, these words out and give it to King Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful Heavenly Father, I come before you today, November the 26th, Friday, 2021. And I come on here, Father God, to share the beautiful words of encouragement that you've given me to share with my brothers and sisters, Father God. Hallelujah. Lord, I ask that you will bless this message. I ask that you will anoint this message. I ask you, Father God, Lord, that you put your words in my mouth, Father God. And I ask you, Father God, just, Lord, to have your way, have your way in each and every one of us. I plead the blood of Jesus over my brothers and sisters in Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of our children and over all of our grandchildren. Father, I cancel every wicked plan of the devil. I rebuke every wicked plan of the devil coming against the body of Christ in any way. I silence, I nullify and render powerless and useless 
every attempt of the devil to steal the joy of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Hallelujah. We know the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Hallelujah. But thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have come to give us life abundance and life eternal. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I commit this video into your hands. Have your way. Uh, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Glory to God, my beautiful family. And so let's get straight to it because I don't want it to uh, to go on for too long, which is which is what I usually tend to do. So now, encouraging word. Um, 5.53 p.m., uh, November the 25th, which was yesterday, um, the Lord spoke a word to me. And all he said was, the Olivet Discourse. The Olivet Discourse. It is happening now. And so I was blown away. And I, I, as always, the Lord told me to look at the time as soon as he gave me that word. And I wrote down the time. And it's just amazing how the Lord does this you know the time he gave me the word the word and he prompted me to look it up in the strongest concordance is just amazing brothers and sisters 5 53 p.m the lord says the olivet discourse the olivet discourse it's happening now and so he prompted me to go and read the olivet discourse um the scriptures in the word of god and i encourage you to do the same hallelujah um well 5 53 in strong's concordance is a peca de chomai and it means to await eagerly, and to expect eagerly, and to look for. Well, what did the Lord command us to watch for? Didn't he command us to watch for the signs of his coming? Did he, didn't he command us to watch for his coming? Hallelujah. He encouraged us to await eagerly for that day. And so it's amazing how the timing, the perfect timing, that he gave me that message, the Olivet Discourse, really is about, you know, regarding the end times, and about watching and waiting eagerly for the coming of our Lord and Saviour. Glory to God, brothers and sisters. Glory to God. And so now... Praise the Lord. Um, now, what happened the other day, I want to share this with you. Um, it just really, um, I thought it was interesting, you know, so many people are speaking about... Um, you know, there's a blood moon, I think, around about December the 4th, December the 5th, another blood moon. Well, we just had a blood moon on the 19th of November. There's another blood moon coming on December the 4th, December the 5th. And um, it's quite interesting because um, many have been shown by the Lord. And, you know, this could be a time marker. Maybe it's a time marker. Something is about to happen. Um, and, you know, many are speaking about this time frame, that something possibly happening. Some saying beginning of great tribulation, some saying the rapture. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm not here to set any dates because I don't know when the Lord is coming. But I do know that the Lord has called me as his watchman, as his watchwoman, his daughter, to, um, to basically share with you those things which he gives me. In sharing, it encourages one another. Um, you know, if the Lord wasn't using a whole group of watchmen and watchwomen, hallelujah, from all over the world, hallelujah, how, um, you know, it would be so much more difficult to wait for him. But there's a reason why he does what he does. He uses us as watchmen and watchwomen. He gives us the things which he gives us to share with the body of Christ because so many watchmen and watchwomen have said in sharing and in listening to what the Lord is giving others, it basically encourages us while we wait. I get so overjoyed to, to listen to people's visions and dreams and messages, hallelujah, that the Lord has given them. Even children are on the receiving end of rapture dreams, hallelujah, rapture visions and messages, hallelujah. God is no, no respecter of persons, and this should not surprise us, hallelujah. We're living in the generation where God's Spirit is being poured out, hallelujah, um, and, and God is revealing much to his body because he wants us to be prepared. He wants us to be watchful, excited, and ready. Glory to God. Praise Jesus. So now, what came to me the other day is this, you know, being that that blood moon is December the 5th, um, anything is possible, you know, anything can happen. And it's okay to speculate, you know. I'm excited about the coming of the Lord. I am, My eyes are not on the world. My eyes are on the coming of Jesus. There is a crown. Um that awaits those, hallelujah, to, there is a crown that all those will receive who loved the appearance of, the, of our Lord and Saviour. There is a crown of righteousness that each of us will receive all because we loved the appearing 
of our precious Savior. Glory to God. And so, so what came to me? Revelation 12, 5, brothers and sisters. Wow. And this was just the Lord imprinting this on my heart. Revelation 12, 5. Wow, what does Revelation 12, 12, 5 say? Revelation 12, 5 is speaking about a birthing event and the child being caught up to God's throne. Interesting, if anything were to happen, that's the same day. So 12, 5, Revelation 12, 5, December 5th, December being the 12th month, the 5th day being the 5th day of December, 12, 5. Glory to God. So the, the birthing event... Um, Hallelujah. The birthing event is spoken about in Revelation 12, 5. So I think it is quite amazing when we see the things taking place currently at the moment. Um, the Lord is speaking and He is really quickening our spirits. He is really revealing much to His body. And it's an exciting thing to be able to share um, this you know, with each other. What He's sharing, what He's revealing. Um, hallelujah. Um, and so now, yeah, so take that to the Lord. I found that pretty interesting. And regardless, look, we know, you know, Jesus spoke about how the, there would be signs in the sun, in the moon, and the stars. So a blood moon. He even spoke about how the blood, how the moon would be turned to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And so when we see these, these blood moons that happen, and that, well, that one that happened on the 19th of November that I spoke about in my video, Hallelujah. Look at what transpired on that day of the blood moon. Wow. I mean, I mean, this, it, it's just amazing. And not only that, that blood moon, that specific blood moon was a very rare blood moon. It was one of the longest blood moons in, I think it was 600 years, if I'm correct. And um, hallelujah. God is speaking to his church. And now, basically, coming up now, on December the 5th, another blood moon. Something is coming, brothers and sisters. Something is coming. And, um, and we need to be ready. We need to be looking up. We need to be waiting expectantly, continuing on sharing the Word of God, revealing God's Word, you know, sharing God's Word, um, praying for people, laying our hands on the sick, sharing God's Word, hallelujah, with the unsaved. We have to continue to work while it is still day because nighttime is coming when we will, we will not be able to work when it is night. Hallelujah. But we need to shine bright for Jesus and we need to just... Hallelujah. Our life is no longer our own once we're in Him. Hallelujah. So we should be living for Him. We should be, you know, out there and just declaring, you know, the coming of the Lord. You know, trying to win as many souls into the kingdom of heaven before that trumpet sounds. Hallelujah. Because that trumpet is about to sound, my family. That trumpet is about to sound. Hallelujah. Very ex exciting times that we are living in. So now... At 11.09 p.m., 18th of November, the Lord said, You will see me in all my glory. My darling, my darling daughter, you will see me in all my glory. And when the Lord gave me that word, you know, I wrote it down straight away. It just really blessed me. And, and in that moment, as he was speaking that to me, he was saying, you know, um, he, he, he put that scripture in my mind um, that it is not like... It is not known what we will be, but when we see him, we will be like him. There is a day coming that we're going to see the Lord in all his glory. Hallelujah. This is amazing. We're going to behold our Savior. We're going to behold the beauty of our beautiful Savior, brothers and sisters. I look forward to that day. Hallelujah. I'm so excited for that day. And it just it's coming quicker than a freight train. Quicker than a freight train. And that's what the Lord's been imprinting on my heart. He's coming sooner than we think. Hallelujah. And that's the deception that many people are, are looking at the world and they're thinking that everything's going to go back to normal. But the Lord gave me a revelation. And he said, in that revelation, he said, normal is not coming back, my daughter, but I'm coming back. Hallelujah. So, you know, we, we just have to continue to encourage one another and um, keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Not, you know, not look at the world and say everything's going back to normal, you know, go back into the world. Sadly, a lot of people are going back into the world, living for the world, living for themselves. 
But Jesus Christ is coming back. And the Lord said it will come upon them like a snare. That day will come upon them like a snare. If we are not watching as the five wise virgins, when the bridegroom cried out at midnight, it was only the five wise ones that went in with him. The door was shut in the face of the five foolish ones. What's the Lord saying in, in that message? There were ten virgins. There were ten brides. Only half of the church is going to be ready on that day. Half of the church is going to be ready. Think of how many Christians there are, are in the world. How many people that, that confess Him with their mouths, but their hearts are far from Him. Hallelujah. The Bible says you will know them by their fruit. By their fruits. A good tree does not bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. You will know them by their fruits. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So now, um, another recent word Jesus gave me. This journey is almost over, my darling. The new one is about to begin. And as I share all these words with you, just understand that as the Lord has spoken these words to me, I'm his bride, but you're also his bride. Hallelujah. We are the bride of Christ. And the Lord speaks these words to me, to encourage me, but also to encourage me to share with you. Because these words spoken to me is not just for me to keep to myself. The Lord is speaking to you through me as well. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the Lord is telling you and me, this journey is almost over, my darling. The new one is about to begin. What new journey? Well, when we leave this life, when Jesus comes to take us, we're going to begin eternity with our King. Hallelujah. We will never be apart from our King ever again. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I look forward to that day. Glory to God. And so now, November 26th, hallelujah, which was just this morning. This was beautiful what happened. Uh, um... This was beautiful what happened. I sat down, um, oh, I sat down and the Lord spoke to me. And all I heard him say was, My daughter, I sat down at the right hand side of my father. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so, my beautiful daughter, you too will sit down at my right hand on my throne. And so, I quickly wrote down the time 7 19 was when he gave that to me. Brothers and sisters, it's one thing to read the Word of God. Praise God that He's given us His Word. God speaks to us through His Word, through His Holy Word. Jesus is the Word of God that became flesh. And God speaks to us through this Word. So I love the Word of God. Hallelujah. The Word of God is food for our spirit. Hallelujah. And we need to feed our spirit if we, if we, we want to grow as believers in Christ, yeah? But so it's one thing to read the Word of God, but then when the, when the Lord reminds you of His Word, and when He speaks a direct scripture or word to your heart, it's just such a beautiful thing. And so in that moment when the Lord spoke that to me, and when He said, I sat, I sat down at the right hand side of my Father, and so my beautiful daughter, you too will sit down at my right hand on my throne. What a beautiful reminder. That he's, in that moment, he's saying, he's saying that to you as well. He's saying this to you. If you're a son or if you're a daughter of the Most High God, the Lord is saying the same thing to you. And he gave us his word in Revelation 3.21. Glory to God. And that word says, the one who overcomes, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. As I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. God is so good and he's so faithful. You know, when God gives you a word of encouragement, you know, it just it's just a beautiful thing. It encourages you, it uplifts you, it brings you joy and peace. But in that moment... The Lord is saying, I'm pleased with you, my daughter. I'm pleased with you, my son. I'm pleased with your dedication to my kingdom. And that's what I felt the Lord speaking to me in that moment. And, you know, just hallelujah. We, and I, I want to encourage every one of you, my precious family in Christ, that, um, you know, as, you, as I share these amazing revelations with you that the Lord has given me and these beautiful words the Lord has, has given me, I encourage you to, to
Take everything I share to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Take everything to the Lord in prayer. And I encourage you, you know, for those of you who don't understand how God speaks, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. He said that his sheep know his voice, they hear his voice, and they follow him. So when you have a relationship with someone, it's not just one person speaking. You speak and the other person speaks. And that's exactly what it is like with Jesus. Hallelujah. We speak to Jesus and he speaks back to us. But you know, when you pray, make sure when you pray, when you finish praying, ask the Lord every time you pray, Lord, speak to me. Do you have a word to speak to me, Lord? And then just be still and know that he is God. Be still. And in that moment, the Lord will speak to you. You know, I'm reminded of what my beautiful daughter, when she was younger, she's 14 now, um, 14 years old and really on fire for the Lord. She's a beautiful artist. Um, she has a wonderful relationship with Jesus. She prays and the Lord gives her beautiful heavenly visions. Um, and I remember when Savannah, my 14-year-old daughter, was, was younger, um, she said that, um, you know, like when the Lord began to speak to her, she said, Mom, the best way to describe what God's voice sounds like, the best way for me to describe it, Mom, is that it's like there's an ear on my heart. It's like there is an, an ear on my heart and God speaks and I hear God speaking from my heart. I mean, out of the mouths of babes. Well, that is exactly how it is. God speaks. It's a still, small voice from, from your heart. He speaks from your heart. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you also, make sure whatever you are hearing, make sure that it is, you know, it lines up with the Word of God because my brothers and sisters, the Bible says we have to test the spirits, you know. Hallelujah. We have to test the spirits, you know. And uh, if you're hearing something that completely contradicts the Word of God, you have to rebuke that spirit. You have to rebuke it and you just, you have to rebuke it. We have to test the spirits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, my sheep know my voice. You know when something, you, you, the, the Lord, if you're a sheep, you belong to Jesus, you will know. God will give you discernment when something is not of the Lord. And this is why it's important for us to know the Word of God, to study the Word of God, to read the Word of God, to learn the Word of God. Because if you don't know the Word of God for yourself, you know, if you don't know the Word of God for yourself, um, you won't be able to discern if what you are hearing comes from the Lord or comes from an evil spirit. This is why it's so important to know the Word of God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Um, and now there was something else I wanted to share with you and it just almost slipped my mind. Let me see, what was it? Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Um, all right, it will come to me, and I just, I'm just going to read, hallelujah, let me read, uh, thank you Jesus, my brothers and sisters, I'm just going to read from Romans 8, 31 to 39, is what the Lord has given me to encourage you today, glory to God, so Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to, to 39, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather is, uh, it is Christ that died, ye rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Glory to God. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, 
nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Nothing will be able to separate you and me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And now, the last scripture I want to share with you is something that we are all meditating upon daily because we we love the Lord more than we love the world. We love Jesus more, more than we love our life and the Lord called us to watch. Hallelujah. The Lord's given us a promise in his word. Um, hallelujah. Of, um, of this wonderful day that is looming on the horizon, my brothers and sisters. Glory to God. The catching up of the church. And so now let me read from from 1 Thessalonians, I'm going to be reading from 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Glory to God. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Hallelujah, my precious family in Christ. Glory to God. Um, and let me just read this um, this for you. Well, I mean, I love that scripture because really that's where we're at. We're waiting for the Lord. Um, we, we know the Lord's coming for us. And we, you know, the, the wise bride is ready and looking every day, expecting and waiting eagerly, knowing that it can happen at, at any moment. The foolish bride is saying, no, can't happen now, not going to happen, not, you know, we're living in a time where, you know, you cannot even speak about the coming of the Lord, and uh, to other believers, and they rise up, they get offended, they try to silence you, and they try to scare you into thinking, in, into making you think that we're going to have to suffer a little bit first, no, 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 no. there's no escape, you're, you're going to have to suffer, the devil is a liar, I'm sorry, but in the Bible I read, Jesus made it very clear, Revelation 3.10, that he will rescue us from the hour of trial, which is going to test the whole earth. The hour of trial is referring to the time of Jacob's trouble. Why is it called the seven years of Jacob's trouble? Hallelujah. When the rapture happens, the whole point of the rapture taking place is so that God can turn his attention to the elect. Hallelujah. To Israel. Hallelujah. He's hardened their hearts. Okay, they've been blinded and their hearts have been hardened. But the Lord will turn his attention to Israel. Israel is his beloved. Hallelujah. And so God has not forgotten about Israel. And so um, yeah, the seven year great tribulation is a time, as the Bible says, like no other. There's never been a time like it, nor will there ever be a time like it. God does not want any one of his children to be here during the seven years of great tribulation. Hallelujah. That's, that's why he's even going to rescue the innocents, the young babies, the children, children under the age of accountability, every true child of God that belongs to him. It's going to be so bad that the Lord is going to take us out before the man of sin can even come onto the scene. The Bible says in the middle of the seven years is when um, he walks into the temple, the Antichrist walks into the, walks into the temple, okay, and um, that's when he causes, um, he, that's when the abomination of desolation, so the abomination of desolation, right, happens in the middle, three and a half years, so three and a half years from the beginning, happens in the middle of the seven years, and that's where the Antichrist himself sits in the temple in Jerusalem, declaring himself to be God, right. At the beginning of, of the seven-year tribulation is when the Antichrist is revealed and he makes a covenant. He makes a seven-year covenant. 
So how can the church still be here if the Bible says the restrainer will be removed, the restrainer being the Holy Spirit, and each of you who have the same spirit who raised Christ to life, the Bible says if we have the same spirit that raised Christ to life, we too will be raised to life on that day. Glory to God. So the Holy Spirit is removed, and we the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, is removed. And then the Bible says, and then that wicked one, the son of perdition, okay, the Antichrist himself, will be revealed at the beginning of the seven years. So the pre-tribulation rapture is biblical, it's sound, um, it's truth, Jesus taught it. And, uh, you know, if you're a Christian believing that you are appointed to wrath and you're appointed to suffer, well, you're saying that the blood of Jesus was not enough. The blood of Jesus is enough and was enough. And there's a body of believers that has been washed, washed clean in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we are ready and awaiting for the first flight, which is the rapture of the church. We know because the Lord, the Holy Spirit himself, has confirmed it time and time and time again to too many of us, not just in his word, but in the spirit. He said, my sheep hear his voice. So many of us doing videos, so many of us watchmen and watchwomen are all in one accord, hearing the same thing. Well, it's no surprise because the Bible says that God does not do anything unless he reveals it to his people. So it's no mistake as the Lord gives you a word and then it just turns out that so many other people from around the world are receiving the same word because it's the same spirit. Hallelujah. God doesn't act alone. If it's just one person saying, the Lord told me this and no one else is saying it, then you've got a question. Well, hang on. Was that really the Lord who spoke that to you? Because the Lord will always confirm his word. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, and I'm sorry to go on and on and on, but... um. Glory to God, you know, the Holy Spirit is just so wonderful and, you know, it's just, it's all His timing, my brothers and sisters in Christ. But I have to read this as the Lord is leading me now to read this because this describes, it's a description of the day of the Lord. Glory to God. And I'm just going to read that and then I'm going to finish up. All right, praise God. So that's in 1 Thessalonians and reading from um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, reading from verse 1. Glory to God. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. <clears throat> when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travaileth upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light. <coughs> and the children of the day, we are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, us who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet of the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, that's the word of God, my brothers and sisters. Praise Jesus. So I, I love you all, my beautiful family. And, um, and I just encourage you to keep looking up because your redemption draws near. I encourage you to keep on in the word of God. Keep on fellowshipping with other believers. Keep on trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's such a faithful God. He will never leave us or forsake us. And keep on spreading the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, you know, more importantly, I encourage you, if the Lord um, has done something wonderful in your life, I encourage you to... Do a video, share share with us, you know, share with um with your brothers and sisters in Christ what the Lord is doing. God wants us to testify. When we testify, it brings God glory. Hallelujah. So God wants us and also when we share our testimonies, that's how we overcome the devil. The Bible says we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. 
So don't don't think that whatever the Lord has shown you or revealed to you is too small to share. Hallelujah. Um, because, you know, you might think it's too small, but the Lord has given it to you for a reason. And he wants you to share it with the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Because in sharing with others, it really encourages us um, and excites us as we, you know, as we, you know, we keep looking up for his coming. Because his coming is so, so, so near, my brothers and sisters. Um, any moment, he's coming back at any moment. As the word of God says, he's coming like a thief. No one knows when the thief is coming. Hallelujah. So we have to be ready. Um, our lamps filled with oil. Hallelujah. Not running low on oil. Not half full of oil. Not empty, but filled with oil. Hallelujah. And the oil represents the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Um, in my one of my next videos, I'll share the amazing testimonies um, of um, my ministry and what the Lord is doing on the streets. Um, people are just being touched and it's a really exciting time to see um, what the Lord is doing. And you know, the Lord gave me a word beginning of this year, um, a powerful word that um, just really blew me away how he confirmed that word. As, I, as he gave me that word and I shared it with you guys in my video, um, that word was regarding how the Lord is going to use us for his glory, how we're going to lay our hands on the sick, we're going to perform great exploits and just uh, there's going to be such a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. And, um, and you know, like that has already begun. And if you're not encouraging people on the streets, if you're not preaching the word of God, if, you're not going to see that there's a revival. There is a revival. And I'm hearing testimonies from all over the world of what the Lord is doing in Israel and other countries. And so God's spirit is moving like never before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so um, I encourage you to get involved. You know, don't be a spectator just standing on the sidelines. Because if you're a spectator standing on the sidelines, you are not going to believe that revival is already happening. God's spirit is already moving. People are being set free from so many things. Hallelujah. People are being set free, delivered, healed, restored. God is moving in such a wonderful way. And it shouldn't surprise us because he said, hallelujah, that, that, um, that he goes to the Father. And he said that if we believe in him, we will do the same things. Hallelujah. That we will lay our hands on the sick, we will cast out demons. Hallelujah. We will, Jesus said it with his own mouth. So I want to encourage you. Be a participator, not a spectator. Because God will use you for his glory. It's the Holy Spirit that does the work through you. And most importantly, my brothers and sisters, all the glory belongs to King Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, when you humble yourself before the living God, He will exalt you. That's what the Bible says. When you, you humble yourself before the living God and He will exalt you. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you, whatever it is, whatever it is you're doing, do it for the glory of God. Make sure it's God's holy name that is being glorified. Because when you live that kind of life, hallelujah, God will use you in wonderful ways. He will use you in amazing ways. Never forget that the glory belongs to Jesus. All the glory, the honor, the power, the praise is His. And we are just the vessels that have emptied ourselves and have said, Lord, use me for your glory. And what an honor and a privilege it is to be used by God, to be filled with His Spirit, to be counted worthy enough that He would use you to reach out to multitudes all over the world or wherever it is that the Lord is using you. I don't take it lightly, the gift He's given me and the ministry He's given me to come on here and to share with so many of you from so many different countries. Hallelujah. I don't take it lightly. I just feel blessed and encouraged. The Lord is using me in that way. Hallelujah. And I just thank you, my beautiful family, for your prayers and your encouragement and your fellowship. And, um, and I cannot wait to meet you all in the air. Hallelujah. And that's a beautiful thing we have as the brothers and sisters in Christ. We have the same spirit. And we have, um, we have the same heart. And um, just to know that, you know, God, our Heavenly Father, Hallelujah. He loves us so much that he's, He calls us. He gives us the power to become the children of God. We, be, we receive power to become the children of God. Glory to God. 
Well, my family, I love you all so much. Um, and I will see you soon. I'm praying for you all. And um, thank you for your encouraging testimonies of what the Lord is doing and what the Lord has done. Um, and I encourage you, keep looking up. Hallelujah, for, the, for, your, for your redemption draws near. Maranatha, our King, is coming. Bye-bye now, family. See you all in the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> Bye-bye now.